Ever since I was a kid, I've loved to spend time outdoors. From summer picnics with friends to long walks in the fall, singing insects have been the soundtracks to my life and a constant inspiration for me to make my own music. I guess that's why I became an audio artist that focuses on acoustic ecology. There's, imagine a multitude of insects in an area playing their music with the wind and the birds. It's almost as if it's in perfect sync. It's like an orchestra of macro creatures playing background music for a giant film. Given that I have studied singing insects for 15 years now, it's obvious that I find them fascinating. As an ecologist, I am especially interested in their diversity, habitat preferences, conservation concerns, responses to climate change, and behavior, including how they make their sounds. We are here today at Big Marsh Park in Chicago recording some natural sounds at dusk. Big Marsh is one of the best places to look for and hear insects in their songs. Well, this is the whole outer part is uh, called a blimp or a zeppelin, and that's just to keep the wind from blowing into the microphone. So inside of this is a uh, microphone. This is a great time period to listen for singing insects because there's a crescendo at dusk. Human noise begins to die. Their predators lose their vision, and suddenly these insects reveal themselves with a strong chorus, trying to communicate with each other. The term singing insect refers to the insects that produce songs people can hear. Examples of these are the cicadas, the crickets, and the katydids. You have probably heard the cicadas' music on warm summer days. They have a membrane on the side of their body that they vibrate like a drum head, and they can be really loud. The loudest insects on earth are among the cicadas. Then there are the crickets and the katydids, two different groups, but they make their sounds in similar ways. They have file structures on their wings. They vibrate the wings together to produce either a musical chirping sound like the crickets or a less musical buzzing sound like the katydids. Then there are three subfamilies of grasshoppers that occasionally sing as well. The singing grasshoppers produce their sounds in two ways. One is by rattling their wings while flying. The other one is rather than flying, they sit perched with their wings all folded up and they have structures on their legs that they rub against the wings. In general, the songs are produced by males in all these singing insect groups and the females follow them to find their mates. I love that moment every year when I hear the first sound of a cicada buzzing by a tree. Once I hear it, my heart immediately feels lighter and the excitement of the beginning of summer rushes in. Just by hearing the songs carefully, you can tell where you are in time and so much more about the place you are in. The Singing Insects Monitoring Program is a collaboration between the Forest Preserve District of Cook County Dr. Carl Strang, the Midwest Society for Acoustic Ecology, and the Chicago Park District's Night Out in the Parks program. This is a project in which anyone can come out and contribute to the research of scientists like Dr. Strang by recording the sounds of insects they hear around them. All the people who are recording the songs of insects they hear and submitting them to the Singing Insect Monitoring Program are giving us a better understanding of their ecology and the health of the lands that they depend on. My research covers 22 counties. I call it the Chicago region. It centers on Chicago, extending from part of Wisconsin around to a part of Michigan. 
In these 22 counties, there are around 100 different species of singing insects. In other parts of the country, especially the western and southern United States, there are many more species to be found in a comparable sized area. They are ecologically important, though some people might think of insects just as pests. Singing insects are an essential part of the food web. They're an important source of protein and fat. So for example, in the fall, I've often seen coyote scats filled with katydid and grasshopper legs. It's like a buffet for them. For Eastern bluebirds, when the parents are feeding their chicks, one out of every three insects that they feed them is a katydid cricket or grasshopper. Singing insects also help us gauge the health of the land, the health of the soil, and if it's habitable. So with each piece of information and recording, you are helping scientists maintain these various lands for many generations to come. You can find more information about the project at the website singinginsects.net.